This tutorial explains how to find the day of the week in a date object using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame object that we can create with lines two to five of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of R Studio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data contains four rows and one column, which is called date. And in this column, you can see different dates. So let's assume that we want to convert these dates into weekdays. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines seven and eight. So first, in line seven of the code, I'm duplicating our data set because I want to keep an original version of our data set. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data one. And at this point, this data frame contains exactly the same values as our input data frame. Then in the next step, I'm applying the weekdays function and I'm applying this function to our date column in our data set data one. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new column in our data set, which is called weekday. So if you run line eight of the code, our data frame is updated. And you can see that by clicking on our new data frame data one at the top right, and then a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our new data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains still the date column. However, this time we have also added a new column, which is called weekday. And this column contains the weekdays corresponding to these dates. You can also see that the weekday function automatically uses the language that is specified in the settings of your computer. So in my case, this is German. And for that reason, the weekday column contains the German words for the weekdays. So Freitag, Mittwoch, Dienstag, and Samstag. I will show you later how to change that. However, in the second example, I want to show you an alternative to the weekdays function. And this alternative is based on the strift time function, as you can see in lines 10 and 11 of the code. In line 10 of the code, I'm first duplicating our data once again in a new data object, which is called data2. And then in line 11 of the code, I'm again creating a new column, which is called weekday. However, this time I'm using the strift time function to create this date column. And within the strift time function, we need to specify the name of our date column and we need to specify percentage sign A in a character string. So if you run line 11 of the code, our new data set data2 is updated and you can see the result of this code by opening the data set. And then you can see that we have created exactly the same data frame as in the first example. However, this time we have used the strift time function instead. So in the third example, I want to show you an alternative which automatically uses English names for the weekdays. And we can do that as you can see in lines 13 to 16 of the code. So in line 13, I'm duplicating our data. And then in line 14 to 16 of the code, I'm using the SPO6LT function, as you can see in line 16 of the code. And before the application of this function, I'm specifying a vector with the seven weekday names. So if you run lines 14 to 16 of the code, you can see that our new data frame data three is also updated. And you can see the result of this code by clicking on the data frame object. And then you can see that we have created another data frame. And this time this data frame contains the weekdays in English. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. 
I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.